Well, that was pretty cool, but getting inside the icy lab where Utsi is wasn't the only coup for us this season. We also had an exclusive behind-the-scenes tour of the place where Gunter von Hagen's plastinates human bodies, the ones that have become famous thanks to the traveling exhibits called Body World. Turns out this story also won us a gold award at the 2007 World Fest Awards in Houston. In a vat of formaldehyde dug in a backyard lies Gunter von Hagen's next big project. We have to take the elephant out and we have to turn it around because now the elephant is not very nicely preserved on this side. The inventor of plastination has decided to create a new exhibit. He's going to take this massive specimen and cut it into something not much wider than a potato chip. This will be an elephant in slices. We will cut him frontally from the top, from the trunk to the tail, down to one millimeter in thickness. Gunter invented plastination 28 years ago. It's a special way of preserving bodies. However, he's only just recently found a way to use plastination to preserve very thin slices of tissue. I had to develop special polymers, epoxy resins, which can be uh, stained, which uh, uh, are not f uh, brittle. It's this slice technology he plans to use on the elephant, but he can't begin until the elephant is frozen. And Gunter doesn't have a big enough freezer yet. So today, he's trying out the technology on this. This body will be sliced into 600 wafer-thin segments. Okay. And the lower, careful, careful. The reason for freezing is not only to prevent decay, it's also so Gunter can control the thickness of the cuts. Next step, cover it in polyurethane foam. This makes it easier for Gunter to maneuver the body through the saw. We need to form it into a block to allow us to saw as thin as one millimeter. We never can position so nicely uh, with a non-foam block. Press it down here. Go on top with your shoes. OK. Go on top. This step requires the help of Gunter's entire team. We have to wait for about five minutes now and the foam is set. We are not an industrial factory that we would do it with a special press, you know, but we do it once a week. So we do it in this way. It's easy and very effective. The job is really quite interesting. Um, working for someone like Gunter, he's such an unusual, let me put it this way, not in a negative way, but such an unusual individual. No, it's hard, it's ready. We can go because down. of the unusual nature of Gunter's work, he's had to design much of his own equipment. This saw is especially designed for cutting slices, very thin ones, from the human body. Push, slowly. This saw has a very high band speed. It runs at 50 meters per second. But even at that speed, it'll take the entire day to cut this body. Perfect. Perfect. After the pieces are cut, they're plastinated. To do this, they first go into a bath of acetone. The slices stay in acetone until all the water is exchanged against the acetone. Then they're put into a vacuum sealed tub of polymer. This is the plastic that'll preserve the body. The polymer is fluid. And with vacuum, I can extract the acetone, drawing in the polymer as its replacement. I see that bubble comes up to the surface once the vacuum is on. When bubbles cease to appear, I know it's fully impregnated. I can take it out and subject it to curing condition. Now, these one millimeter thick time capsules don't just look pretty. They also provide an abundance of information about the body, something that's particularly useful in medicine. Gunter's assistant, Nadine DeWersey, is a medical student. She knows firsthand how useful it is to study these wafer-thin windows of life. So you look at the slice and there, everything is still set or frozen in time, as Gunter likes to put it. 
um, that gives you as a med school student the chance to go through it again, to analyze, see all the relationships, and then when it starts to get so fascinating that you, it's like a detective, basically. You sit there and you try to figure out what you're looking at, and that's how you learn anatomy really well. In fact, Nadine hardly cracked a book before her anatomy exam, and she still aced it. Gunter believes so strongly in the value of the sliced anatomy, he's even set up a secret lab. It's hidden to stop people from stealing his trade secrets. Here, below the staircase, technicians are working on new ways to inject color into the slices so that they're more lifelike and easier to examine. This is not stained. But here it's stained, so the stained version is much more attractive. Let's right? have a look, yes, absolutely. It may seem like morbid fascination to some, but Gunter's work is groundbreaking, and his slices of life are something he hopes both the general public mm -hmm. and the medical profession will appreciate. Yeah. In fact, he's so eager to enlighten the world about anatomy that one day the world may be looking at a slice of Gunter. The best what I could imagine that without head or with this, to be sliced in zero slices, distributed many universities, and then I am able to teach at several locations at the same time, something which I never can do in life.